Thank you to everyone who's participated in these days. Um, I was going to read out the numbers, but I won't bother now. So, uh, um, no, and uh, so of course, um, well, a big thanks to our speakers, our chairs, our editorial committees, sponsors, and supporters. That includes BMC Plus Medicine, the Lancet, the Lancet Global Health, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, and our media partner, SciDev.net. Uh, and of course, uh, many thanks to RSM. Uh, because it's their event teams, catering teams, and AV teams who've made all this possible. And I want to also say a particular thanks to, to Joy, Ida, Barbara, Mel, Holly, Bargari, Paula, George, Pete, and Sarah, who have coordinated these days and made, made them such a success. Um, yeah. Now, uh, we hope you enjoyed participating in the discussion, so, and please do complete the evaluation. Um, as said yesterday, you can do this on Slido. I think you can also do this on paper. I, I want to finish with a few reflections about the day, and I think it's a difficult, it's, it's a difficult day to summarize because it's actually so wide-ranging. And I, I just look back over the last four years because we've, had, we've, we've done this for four years, this day focusing on, on innovation in humanitarian healthcare, and um, we've talked about the ethics of innovation in humanitarian sessions, settings, the need to evaluate rigorously, but also to learn from failure and not feel afraid of that and actually grow as a result. And of the importance of considering the impacts of these innovations in a broader way, including the appropriation and the meaning attributed to those innovations in the settings in which we work. Today we've been asked to reflect on the extent to which people are really at the center of our innovation. To what extent we focused on the technical side all this time at the expense of the human and social side. And I'd like to ask what that means, what putting people at the, at the center means for us uh, in our innovation, in our work in general. And I think that uh, there are a few words that came out of some of the sessions today that for, for me, Give, go some way to answering that. And these were engagement, humanity, and inclusion. And when I mention engagement, I'm talking not just about engaging with communities once things start to go wrong in our programs, which is often what we do, but um, really from the, uh, from the start at the point of identifying problems, developing solutions, and above all, maintaining that listening and that presence throughout the length of our involvement in that community. When I say humanity, <laughs> It's talking about, it's thinking about people rather than processes in terms of that innovation process we saw from Ben's, Ben's talk this morning. What if we replace that innovation process with the people that are needed to make innovation happen? But it's also about creating the right conditions for our staff and especially thinking about the need for medical education such as Ahmed uh, uh, highlighted in Syria. And then inclusion, which means I suppose, amongst other things, partnerships that ensure meaningful connection between people. And that's not only between patients and staff, but also between staff and staff, and staff in one location and staff in another location. And between the local organizations and the international organizations that particularly made some of those quite remarkable innovations possible, but also in the, the session before that, the advances in SMC and so forth, these were <coughs> multi-organization collaborations. It wouldn't have happened without that. So yesterday, we, I, we asked, I asked a, a few questions as we think about our future and, the, uh, and our, our future strategic plan. Who will be our patients? What care will we offer? Why, we, why, why do we do research? And today is, for me, feels always much more about the how, because whilst we're talking about innovation, innovation is so much of what we do. And how do we need to change to achieve this? And that's a very difficult question for us because we find it easier to look at, talk about, worry about our patients. We find it harder to look at ourselves and think how we need to change to meet that challenge. So another way of saying that is, how can we be people-centered? And particularly, how do we translate these ideas of people-centeredness for an or a medical organization where we do have a lot of unconscious premises or biases about our work? Staff are the people you deploy. Patients are in acute distress and are unable to express their needs. These are some of our biases. I think we must be honest when we're looking at new projects, new programs. That is how we talk. Can we push ourselves to challenge these unconscious biases? 
And I guess another way of saying that is how, well, so pe per, people centeredness, how do we really operationalize that? Even patient centeredness, how do we break that down and make something meaningful come out of it? Yesterday, I suggested that palliative care was a step. But today, from all the presentations and the keynotes, I think it's something much broader than that. It's the, it's the compassion, it's the listening. And, and to use Nan, Nan Buzzard's uh, word, for ultimately, it's, it's empathy. It's empathy for patients, for staff, for the people we interact with in our work, for our colleagues in Syria. It's, it's more than feeling compassion for our patients. We, we're very good at that. I think it's, let's say it's easy to feel compassion for someone that's suffering. Can we look at a stressed, frustrated colleague with empathy? Can we listen and hear the needs of all our, all our staff, all our health, health workers, all our colleagues? And can we be present with those needs, but can we try to enable them? Because many of the examples from today have shown what can happen if we, if we do that. And I think that is, that is where the engagement, the humanity and the inclusion that is needed for innovation and is needed for our work in general lie. So I guess I'll leave it at that. I will say, will empathy make us more patient-centered? And uh, I was going to say, I think that's a good place to start, at least. But in fact, uh, I think the actual answer is, yes, of course, it will make us more person-centered. I think em there's no doubt that empathy is what will make us more person-centered. Now, I will close there, because there are drinks waiting for us. And of course, because we're in Britain, we will use some alcohol to foster empathy. <laughs> um, but uh, I will just fin finish off by saying that Please remember, this is one of a series of events, the Sai Day Southern Africa in Swaziland on the 6th of July, and the Sai Day in South Asia in New Delhi on the 16th of, Ju 16th of July are still to come. And so please stay with us and join in, and now let's have a drink. Thank you very much.